Well, good afternoon, everyone. Lori Hoy here. I <laughs> had posted a little bit earlier that my friend and I, um, Annie, it was going to be going live at three o'clock on Instagram, and we are struggling to get a good connection. So I'm hopeful that Annie can, we can do it here on Facebook, and then I'll share it over on Instagram. Boy, the lighting in here is bad. <laughs> it's really bad. So as soon as Annie comes here, we're going to be sharing um, her story about uh, how she survived um, uh, breast cancer. And um, hopefully, let's see, I am on. Okay. So for those of you that are just tuning in, I'm trying to get my friend Annie to join me on uh, Facebook. I'm, I'm not sure if we can do this or not. I haven't done a dual Facebook. Um, okay. So yeah, we can do that. Let's see. Invite friends to watch Annie and see if she can she can actually get to this particular broadcast. Okay, so while we're waiting for Annie, I just wanted to come in. I don't know if you guys saw my post today, but I, um, I went for my my uh, checkup, my mammogram. It wasn't because I had any issues or um, it was time. And if you read my post today, it's been five years since I had my. Uh, since I had my last mammogram and when I was going home today or actually during the process of getting my mammogram today I thought about wanting to post something but I wanted some information that was real and true to share with my followers right yes as you can we can all get on Google and we can find all kinds of information about breast cancer right there's, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month and there's always, you know, uh, fundraisers out there for breast cancer. But I wanted something real and true and from the heart, right? So I uh, sent a message to my friend Annie. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> this connection is crazy. I went to my friend and, and I sent her a message and I said, Annie, can you, you know, help me out with some information that I could share that would be helpful? And she sent me this amazing message. Um, and was just telling me all about her story. And I, I feel bad, first of all, that I never really asked, but I, I guess, you know, it's sometimes it's just really difficult to, to ask people the, the, the questions. And so we decided to come on here live. So Instagram didn't work. So we're going to try here on Facebook. Here we go. Annie it says, bring them on, bring Annie on call. So I'm going to add Annie and we'll see if this works. It might Wi-Fi connection here at the center. Um, it's supposed to be rather good, but yay! Is it working? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, maybe this will work well. <laughs> okay. So fingers crossed, everybody, that this works. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because I think it's a really important topic to talk about, not just during, you know, Women's Health Month or I think any time. And because it was very timely for me today. And I'll have to, I just wanted to, to give you a quick anecdote of what happened to me today when I went in for my appointment. You know, now that we have COVID going on and we have to wear the mask and, you know, I, here at the center, I wear it, I, I wear it to when I go into businesses and it never really dawned on me that, you know, about it. But today when I was in there, and for those of you that have had a mammogram, you know what I'm talking about, right? You are close in this little, well, at least in my, where I go, it's a small room. It was, it was very warm. I had the mask on and I started to think about what uh, things like, what if they find something and, oh, that feels different. And I'm sore from my workouts this week. So I had some extra tenderness. And so my wheel started running and then I started to feel like I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and then I had the mask on. And all these things started going through my mind. And it really was palpable for me for the very first time in my life, uh, the gravity of getting a mammogram. So I immediately reached out to my friend Annie here to just kind of, I wanted to, I wanted to post something real and true, not just, you know, the statistics out there. I wanted to talk to somebody 
who had firsthand experience. And so I reached out to Annie and she shared her story with me in detail. And I thought, you know what, let's go live. So we are here today to share with you um, our story. I mean, I don't have a story about breast cancer, but our story of where we've come together as friends and how we met and Annie's story. And I'm gonna let Annie take it from here for a little while because I've been yakking and she's really the superhero in this story. So um, yeah. <laughs> Well, do so you just want me to start how I started my messages with you? Absolutely, absolutely, because it was amazing, and I got chills and tears and all the things. So, <laughs> well, it, it was a crazy journey, and um, I know you reached out and asked if I could, you know, give you some insight on how nutrition plays a part in breast health and and breast cancer, and and it certainly does. Um, when I found a lump and I had to go through the whole procedure with um, the first mammogram and ultrasounds and um, then a lumpectomy that led into chemotherapy that eventually led to a bilateral mastectomy, both breasts were removed totally. And I went through reconstruction. So my very first appointment ever, I chose a very good hospital, the uh, Fox Chase Women's Cancer Hospital in Philadelphia. They were wonderful because in one appointment, I spent the whole day there, I met my oncologist, my surgeon, my plastic surgeon, and lo and behold, who knew? A nutritionist. Um, mm. So they brought a nutritionist in the room and asked, um, he talked to me about nutrition health, asked me how my diet was and my my exercise regime, you know, what was I doing? Um, I was obviously not overweight. Um, they could very much see I was, you know, and what I told them, I was very active. I was still playing adult sports, volleyball and softball. I was on teams. I was coaching my kids' teams. Very, very active. Um, but we talked about nutrition. And um, I never knew the importance that nutrition had in, in breast health. So um, fast forward a little bit. I was tested um, for the gene of breast cancer. It does not run in my family, and I did not have the gene. So that told us one thing. My breast cancer was estrogen-driven, and it was environmentally um, brought on. So that means it was something that happened at some point in my life that I ingested, I put on my body, I absorbed into my body. Um, something contributed to my breast cancer, a gene mutation, and led to breast cancer. Um, could that have been nutrition? Absolutely. I, you know, didn't have the greatest diet. I was fairly healthy and active and I was not overweight, but you know, when I had kids and running them here and there for 10 years, what did we do? We stopped at McDonald's drive through We stopped for hot dogs to throw on the grill, you know, after a ball game. Um, we had pizza. As every many morning. families As do. Typical families do when you're busy and mm -hmm. you're raising kids. Um, the other thing, um, I found very interesting. So not only was my diet not that great when I look back on it, you know, like, wow, it could have been all those things. I was a big French fry eater. Um, those bad, bad fats are so, um, bad and can very much contribute to breast cancer as we are finding out in recent years now. Um, could it have been that? Could it have been maybe body lotions or, uh, makeup or deodorant, talc powder, you know, we know that's big out there right now for ovarian cancer. Could that have led to breast cancer too? We don't know. It's something that obviously went into my body at some point in my life that was toxic to it. Um, and the one thing I found very interesting, I told you that um, alcohol consumption, um, mm -hmm. we are finding more and more, you know, how toxic alcohol can be. Uh, we know that a glass of red wine typically once in a while is healthy. It has some healthy benefits. It's, you know, that's nothing, you know, untrue about that. But um, we all um, metabolize that. Our body handles that all differently. Every person will handle it differently. Um, I drank on the weekends, you know, all through my adult life. We were with friends on Friday nights. We opened a bottle of wine on a, you know, a Sunday afternoon for a dinner. You know, it was typical. Um, so could that have been too? I don't know, but it was very interesting that a nutritionist came to sit with me, tell me and talk to me about what I should be eating through this process, what I should be avoiding through this process and post, you know, survival time, post breast cancer surgery and all of that, post chemotherapy. It was very, very interesting because they wanted to feed my body with good, wholesome foods, um, a lot of um 
fibrous vegetables, the, the healthy leafy greens, I know is very important. We needed to avoid soy because we know soy based products can elevate estrogen levels, right? Um, and mine was right. estrogen driven, right? Right. So, so basically, just to add on to that, um, when you consume soy, it acts as estrogen in your body. So it will. So if you are someone that produces estro estrogen, like a woman, that's going to boost the amount of estrogen. So if you're someone that is consistently eating soy, like soy sauce, um, if it's not organic, you know, or if it's if it's if it's GMO, you need to really be careful of those things because it does. The other thing I want to say about that too is that not only does soy affect a woman's body, it affects a man's body. So if you think about, and for lack, this is the term that, that people use is man boobs, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about men who grow, right, a chest, a lot of times they're going to have extra hormones in their body and one of those culprits could be soy. So I just wanted to, to, to share that as well. So go ahead, Annie. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, just learning to eat. Um, I needed to fill my body with protein because my body, I was having tissue removed. My breast tissue, you know, was going to be removed. So I needed to eat foods that were going to help, pre you know, prepare for rebuilding my body, rebuilding tissue and muscle fibers and tendons and, and all of that. Um, so protein was, you know, key, um, healthy fats were key um, for that. They're very high, in, you know, protein. Um, and, um, going through, you know, chemotherapy, we didn't want inflammation in the body, obviously, and in recovery. So removing any right. foods that would cause inflammation. So that's where the dairy comes into play, um, in a lot of cases. So we kind of eliminated that, um, to this day, it's nine years now that I'm cancer free. And, you know, I'm stuck with that diet because it was an eye opener. I'm like, holy shit, I don't eat half this mm -hmm. stuff. But I needed to learn. I did not want to go through that again. And I never want to go through that again. That was a very right. difficult time in my life. So, you know, I had to eat to help myself stay healthy right. and fight right. cancer. So, right. So did you have to go through a course of chemotherapy or what, what part of that, you know, your treatment did you have then after the surgeries were done? Yeah, so I had like four months of chemotherapy. So it was very hard to eat during that time because of the nausea and your stomach is just not right. Um, so, you know, very light foods and eat when I was hungry, but try to eat all of those healthy options as much as possible because I had to keep my body healthy. I needed to have nutrients to help me build and, and get healthy and fight this. You know, I was fighting a disease and, you know, we need to have a healthy body and a healthy immune system to do so. So all of those you know, helping me, um, nutrients and vitamins and minerals were key in my diet for that reason. Um, and also, uh, they put me on a supplement, um, some supplements. It's the first time I've ever heard of BCAAs, the branch chain amino acids, mm -hmm. going, you know, 10 years ago. Um, that was key for me for recovery and repair, as we know, as, you know, athletes and bodybuilders and whatever we all, you know, at, you know, we all use that. Um, and L-glutamine was a big one because that is very good for tissue repair. And of course I had a lot of tissue removed that needed help rebuilding and repairing itself. Um, so they were two key supplements that I was, um, you know, surprised to see in there. So um, very helpful for that. But yeah, the chemotherapy was not fun. You know, you lose your hair, you lose your eyebrows, your eyelashes, you look sick, you know, because you don't have those things. And, um, you know, we went through reconstruction after the chemo. So I made breasts removed, um, reconstruction. And although they look very pretty <laughs> on the outside, and, you know, I'm very, I'm one of the fortunate ones because they don't look that bad at all. Um, very little scarring and a wonderful, wonderful plastic surgeon. But um, it's hard. It's hard as a woman to handle that. You know, um, where does nutrition come into play once again um, what is for depression and anxiety? And I don't know if a lot of people are aware of that, that the foods you eat, some foods can lead to depression and anxiety. And because there is a gut health, brain health connection. Um, so you need to have good gut health to keep your brain healthy and um, fight, you know, things like dementia and depression and things. And so when we're, women are going through this and you're losing, you know, your breast and your face with that, you know, that's one thing they're concerned about. So my diet um, was geared towards that too, removing high 
carbohydrates that could lead to depression um, and caffeine, no caffeine. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Um, so anything that causes, you know, yeah. anxiety. So it was very strict on the diet. I was very, um, you know, amazed by that. So what, what age were you, Annie, that you went through this and how old are you now? Okay. So I was 42 when I got my first mammogram, um, because I felt a little lump, um, right. that little lump, we kind of let go according to my doctor. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> so really I went through breast cancer at age. Yeah. Yeah. Let me talk to you a whole nother story about that, but, um, let be an go. advocate. Yeah. Be an advocate for yourself. You Absolutely. have to advocate and, and say, Absolutely. no, I want you to that lump now right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hindsight, you know I hope that doctor learned right. something from this as well but um right. so it's been nine years I'm going to be 52 and a few August 2nd would be my ninth anniversary of my my rebirth day <laughs> I was I get yeah. a chance at yeah. the second chance at life so I get a rebirth day every year <laughs> right so speaking of change of life, because one of the things that I have shared over the last month or so is that when I started to change my nutrition and really dialed in two things, I pretty skipped menopause. So I did have symptoms at the beginning, but when I changed my nutrition, I literally did not get anything. So when you were going through this, of course, that's around the age that all of that starts to happen. I mean, yes, there are outliers. Some women start it, God love them, in their 30s. And some don't get it till later or, or go through it till later. So what happened to your body during that time as far as that's concerned? So um, the chemotherapy um, pushed me into menopause. So on top of, you know, learning to accept that now I don't have breasts, um, I also had to, you know, realize that I'm no longer going to be able to have children. Not that I maybe want it anymore, but still that was an right. option taken away from me that I wasn't ready right. for either. Um, so that was an unnatural thing that happened. Um, so I was pushed into menopause. I am on a medication called tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is one of the leading medications any breast cancer cancer survivor post-surgery will be put on and I have to be on that for 10 years so I'm on year nine um, that is an estrogen blocker and that is preventing that breast cancer from coming back um, okay. because I was at age 42 43 not quite at the age I was on the young end of getting breast cancer still I'm not ready for menopause right. yet for another eight ten years perhaps mm -hmm. so they want to keep me in menopause, they wanted to push me into that. And I needed to be on this. Um, so I can naturally, at the age, my body will probably naturally go through menopause at maybe age 52, 53, that's coming up, they need me to stay on this, they don't do not want me to ever go back to a menstrual cycle, like or my body try to do that. Um, it's just would not be good or a healthy thing. So it's keeping me in menopause. Um, that particular medication is causing me hot flashes. That is a side effect. Unfortunately, I have to deal with that. Um, but um, eating properly to help combat some of those symptoms, as we know, there's the nutrition again, you know, what you can eat, mm -hmm. what you, know, you should avoid, and that, you know, weight gain at, you know, the, that age that we're all getting to, um, you know, it's very key. So, um, you know, you can, you know about the nutrition in the menopause and what to avoid. Yes. yes and what you yeah. probably should include yeah, or and, have more. And so, I mean, like a theme that I've heard throughout this whole thing outside of the cancer part is one, nutrition, but two is hormones. And yeah. so as we age, we know, ladies, that our hormones start to go a little wonky because our basically our estrogen level starts to change. And so that's, from, from my most basic understanding, that's why we start to go through all of those ups and downs, mood swings, you know, dryness, you know where, I'm not going <laughs> to, I think it's still PG, right? All, the, <laughs> all those symptoms. And what, what we do, and I'm, I'm going to include Annie in this because she is, um, I'm going to speak for her here in a minute. She is a trainer. She, uh, she works with people on their nutrition and their health. And 
what we do is we teach people how to eat well so those hormones aren't all over the place. And that can be different for every single person. Every body is di mm -hmm. different. So every body needs something a little bit different. But basically, if you can get your, your hormones in balance, I'm not going to say that you'll never get X, Y, or Z, right? But definitely you have a better chance of avoiding getting those things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in, in both of, of what we do, that's, that's part of it. But, you know, both Annie and I are right now going through a functional medicine-based nutrition coach training. And we're learning a lot about how food affects your health. And I, I, I believe you have highlighted for your story that it definitely made a huge difference in your overall health from the time you got diagnosed with breast cancer until where you are right now. Would you say that's Absolutely. fair? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if anyone is diagnosed with breast cancer or ovarian cancer or any cancers, you know, I would hope that that um, medical facility hooks you up with a nutritionist or a dietitian and tells you what can be done to help you. And if you can't come out a healthier person after that experience, then then you're not taking it seriously enough. I mean, it had to happen. It was a life changer, no doubt. And um, I'm a healthier, you know, stronger, healthier person because of it and in all aspects, you know, mentally, emotionally, right. physically, you know, everything. Yeah. One of the strongest people I know, and not just physically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how about it, right? Um, so, anyway, are there any other uh, tips or advice that you, um, I, know, I know you had mentioned in your message to me that you always like to leave your classes or a training session with giving someone a tip mm -hmm. or something helpful to take with them from, you know, the class that you've taught or whatnot. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with those that are viewing and are going to watch the replay? Absolutely. And like I said, I do like to, at the end, when we're stretching, I often do try to give a tip to my, my ladies, my gentlemen in class, whoever, um, whether it's nutrition, fitness, health and wellness overall. But one thing when it does come to all of this and nutrition, you know, like I, first of all, I said, when you go to a doctor, be an advocate for yourself and, and don't settle for their answer. Of, Let's just wait and see what happens. Cause lung and breast cancer, you know, because they left that lump alone. So please don't do that. And you, lady, I'm glad you got your mammogram. Don't even know. What, what is it? Every yes, five years? You have to, but yeah, I thought it was well, every two years. I, see, that's the other thing. They, they keep changing it because I believe, and if I remember correctly, and now, you know, I'm, I'm having a little brain fog right at the moment, but I, I thought it was once you turned 40, they wanted you to do it every year. And then at some point during my 40s, it changed. And it was like, what, well, which is it? Is it every yeah. year? Is it, you know, and then waiting five years to me seems like, what was I thinking? Yeah. And, you yeah. know, now they're coming out and, you know, yes, there's radiation involved. And I've, you know, I've read, I've read there's, they're trying to come up with some different things like ultrasound, which today I learned that they're now looking at breast density as, as something that you need to be mm -hmm. concerned about. Mm -hmm. So I'll be learning more about that. And um, I don't know if, if anybody else does this, but I'm a little weird. You know how they have the little the little tape things that go over your your nipples. I save them. <laughs> <laughs> I always save them. I feel like it's something that you know until I know that I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. I save them. That's okay. That That's little... a good one. That's a good reminder. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'd say now in order, you know, be preventative in your health. Start now. Do not wait mm -hmm. till it's too late, till some, you know, disease comes and hits you and then you're forced to. Um, right. So what to do, you know, eat healthy, exercise. Exercise is medicine. It's the best medicine. Just do it. Make good choices of whole, you know, whole foods, organic if possible. Um mm -hmm. Eat a good range, eat the rainbow. You know, it's basic. Yeah. We teach our kids that in kindergarten, right? You know, you should be mm -hmm. eating off the food pyramid, you know, or, or mm -hmm. myplate.gov, right? We, we know mm -hmm. what we're supposed to do. Just do it. Don't wait until um, it's too late and then you're faced with something. 
Um, you know, mine could have been worse. Mine was stage two breast cancer and it could have been much worse. I was very fortunate. And maybe because I listened to, to the doctors and, and ate how right, this was right. and I, I rid all of that bad stuff from my diet and stopped drinking alcohol and things like that. So, um, but always look, the one other tip I want to say, like I said, mine was environmental, something I put on my body, in my body at some point caused the gene mutation. So look at those hidden ingredients in anything you buy. Um, right now, I buy like my deodorant and my body lotions and all that is, is all very like GMO free. It's natural. It's organic products I buy from like Thrive Market or um, right. at a whole, a whole vitamin food store type nutrition store. Um, I spend a little extra, but I am not taking any more chances because I don't know what some of those ingredients are, you know, in my foods or in my things that I'm putting on my body. So it just, just look for those hidden ingredients and know what's going into your body. Yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, I know when people, when we reach out and talk to people about improving their health and want to help them do that, a lot of times, you know, finances are, it's hard and people are reluctant to invest in their health. But when something like this happens, you know, you, I would imagine, cause I've, I have, you know, been very fortunate that I've not had to, to endure something like that um, and hope I never do. But I just believe that our health is our most valued asset and anything that we can do to keep ourselves healthy, everything else kind of like, you know, just comes in line. And so, you, yes, you don't realize it. You can really, you know, just take advantage of that until you're actually down on the couch, you know, two days after a chemotherapy treatment and you can't get off the couch and you look sick and you feel sick. And yeah, you don't want to do that. So, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. You have to just be proactive now and keep your body. And I, I, and I truly don't ever think it's too late to start. Um, exactly. I think anybody can start and improve their health by one, changing their diet, right? Changing what they're eating mm -hmm. Two, exercising or moving every day. It doesn't have to be what we do, right? Mm -hmm. Walking right. is a great exercise. It's free, you know, mm -hmm. get a bike <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and then supplementing, supplementing your nutrition with the vitamins and nutrients that you can't get out of our food because our food, our soil has been depleted of nutrients. So definitely something to, to start today. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'm so fortunate I, I, that I felt like I just stumbled upon that. I was having joint issues. I didn't, I wasn't, you know, diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. I was having joint pain. And so that's what forced me to investigate why, at, and you know, this was five, six years ago, you know, my late forties, mid to late forties, I was feeling like I was maybe in my eighties with joint issues. And I'm like, something's not right. And I turned to nutrition first mm -hmm. and um, I'm glad I did because it has changed. It has changed my life in so many ways, not just, Absolutely. you know, my health, but yeah. People yeah. don't understand how much just a change in your diet can really make you feel so much better. I mean, right. you know, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know I felt bad until I felt good. Like, exactly. That's, that's really the truth. And I've been saying that for years. I didn't know. I felt I felt really good until I felt really good. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm not I'm not perfect. I mean, there are still things that creep in and um, you know, like I, I had mentioned to you that when it you know, on occasion it happens that I will indulge or I'll I'll have some alcohol and I get right thrown back into feeling bad again. Mm -hmm. So it is something that I, I truly believe is a lifestyle and you mm -hmm. don't have to be, you know, super rigid, but you, you definitely have to pay attention to what your body's telling you. So. Absolutely. And I always say, if yeah. it's your lifestyle, there's no thinking about it. That's, that's what you live every right. day. Just let it be your lifestyle. Right. And you don't have to worry about what's for dinner. You don't have to know, you know, just learn it and live it every day and right. you'll be fine. Right. And get some support. That's what we've done. You know, we've, exactly. we've, we've definitely have you support. Both good for that to help, yeah. to help people. So, absolutely. Well, Annie, thank you so much for being mm -hmm. willing to come on live and share your story. I, I, at one point, I'm like, I'm going to record it. I'm just going to record all of your messages and post them. I'm like, no, we are going live. And I, I just really appreciate you doing that and being so vulnerable to share. 
sure. um, you know, this very, very private part of your life. And I know that you just sharing your story and, and your information is going to affect, even if it's one person to change their lifestyle right now to avoid, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, what we've endured for the last two months with COVID and, and learning what, what's, you know, standing in the way of people becoming healthier and happier. So I do appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful uh, day and uh, weekend. So thanks right, thank again. You. Thank you all for all right. watching. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Please share. Please share. Have a good day. Bye-bye.